Hello dear viewers, welcome to my channel Science to Technology. In today's show, Future Friday, we're going to talk about building in space. So let's dive right into it. Well, first we have to understand what is the problem right now, because you have to understand it this way. We are reaching a point where rockets are getting cheaper. We are reaching a point where rockets are getting reusable. And if Starship is ever gets completed in, let's say, next eight years, we will have a rocket that can take a serious amount of payload for seriously low amount of price. So why do we want to build something in space? Because of course, this is going to be difficult. Then why the heck do we want to build it? Well, primary reason is that if you look at any satellite, any communication satellite, uh, it's generally overbuilt like hell. What does that mean? That simply means every bolt, every joint in that system, everything that is designed to carry a uh, load or any structural thing, it's overbuilt. Now, why it's overbuilt? Because in space, you don't technically need that. Inherently, you don't need that because again, there is no gravity there. You are always in constant free fall. So why do you need to overbuild these things? Well, first, for first 10 minutes of the satellite, uh, basically it's a journey to space is very brutal and very violent. I mean, like look at us basically fairy, a giant, super expensive metal structure that is just there just to protect the damn thing and it has like sound dampening it has a lot of extra who has and uh, when you come to satellite itself it will have enforcement on top of enforcement then it will have blast bolts just to make sure that you know things that uh, are acting as a support structure gets uh, detached when it's uh, like you know in orbit so you get the point like satellites are overbuilt and i'm not talking about electrical part of course you want to re have triple redundancy in electrical department but what were the mechanical structure now consequence of those mechanical structure is that it's it makes satellites more expensive to build and not only that it reduces your pay actual payload it's like yeah we have like three computers and like a 50 kilo of metal just to make sure that those three computer can survive the first 10 minute so those reinforcements once they go into space they become useless it's like the mass of the payload fairing now of course rocket has to carry the payload fairing so it's like you always get deduction but still these things are big heavy bulky things if you didn't have to worry about that then what so Basically, uh, there is a very serious limitation of how uh, basically lightweight materials we can use. And then we come to another aspect. Uh, because our rockets are getting more and more powerful and more, uh, current generation of engines are ludicrously powerful, uh, we are reaching a point of limitation of fairings. Basically, rocket can throw a very heavy object. No issue with that. It's just that the objects that we can say they are like in terms of liters, they are very small. Uh, in terms of kilogram, we can send like in tons. We are like, uh, bro, we got this. Don't even think about it. It's like we can send very, very heavy stuff. Like you are talking about around 20 tons to low earth orbit. That's massive. That's almost a single like a uh, unit of uh, ISS. That's very big and massive. However, the volume, that's not limited because again, if you give anyone is like, hey, there is no space constraint, build a habitat just with 20 tons, they will build something that is bigger than ISS. It's just the problem is how the heck you're gonna send it in space. So that's the inherent limitation. If your rocket has the enough horsepower, it will still be limited by the basically fairing. And even if you uh, uh, basically figure the fairing part out, you build a large diameter rocket, you still will be limited by the fact that first few minutes are so violent that you have to utilize something that is ludicrously strong and or robust and overbuilt, which will become useless the moment it's in orbit. So that is the actual tangible problem. So let's contrast that to low earth orbit. Now let's say you build something in low earth orbit. For example, ISS, it will not need support structure. Basically, can you even imagine like this ISS like thing being in an atmosphere or any place where if, even if it's not moving, can you think this will stand on its own? No, it will fall apart. The moment it's inside gravity, it will fall apart because everything is in free fall, it's working. So you can have weird structures like where you have a solar panel down below, you have a satellite in between and a giant hand there and then a giant antenna on top. These things will not work inside a gravity gravitational well. So you do not need support structure if you are building something in low earth orbit iss is a very good example of that and then there is another advantage like uh, if you look at any satellite dish uh, that is built like i'm talking large radio telescope kind of thing they are built like tanks they are like they have metal on top of metal they are multi megaton kind of structures like why they are so overbuilt it's just because they have to deal with rain they have to deal with wind in some places they have to deal with snow and dirt all these things take serious amount of uh, reinforcement to withstand. Now, if you're building something directly in space, you don't have to worry about it. Like it's like uh, building a car without a wiper. So fundamentally, these things make uh, building in space kind of easier. And how large can you make something that is now only limited by how quickly you can throw things up there. Like you can build enormous structure. I'm like the best example I could say, it would be Elysium-like structure uh, that was seen in the movie Elysium. So that's the benefit of building it in low earth orbit. You don't have to need a support structure, uh, which in some scenarios allows you to print uh, human organs because those organs can be printed inside a gravitational well. Support structure will end up blocking itself. So without support structure, there is no way to print that. So the only way to do that is doing it in low gravity environment, example, ISS. 
So let's understand the 3D printing aspect of it. Well, 3D printers are mature technology. How mature? Well, I have a 3D printer. I have Ender 3. So that's how mature this thing is. Like people have their hands on it and it, the technology is reached a point where it's far mature. And soon one company that has a, like a, a patent on a heated chamber that will also expire and then we'll have a next generation of 3D printers. So that technology is mature. We know how this puppy works. And a company uh, made in space already put a th uh, 3D printer in basically International Space Station. So they already proved they can design a printer that is robust enough can survive a rocket launch so we got this like 3d printer we got this technology is mature and benefit of that 3d printer if done correctly it is very simple and very adaptable all you are doing is moving something in three axes how, how do you do that that's up to you you can have a normal xyz carriage structure or you could have just a robotic arm that is moving in that way you can do that that's up to you and uh, because it's adaptable, you can change the material. You can have PLA, you can have uh, PVC, you can uh, do ABS like uh, ISS1 or something else also. All things are possible and including metal 3D printers. Those are actually doable. And I'm talking with current technology. I'm not talking about something like future ways. It's doable now. Yes, it's expensive as hell, but at least it's doable. And then we come to the aspect of it. This 3D printer, of course, it has to be robust, overbuilt to withstand everything. And again, it's a moving part. It, it has to be like, you know, with the extra padding. Then you will be like, wouldn't we reach back to the same problem? No, because the raw material, basically, this one printer is not going to do one thing. It's going to be like, okay, send the file. It's going to do whatever you want it to do. So raw stock becomes the main bottleneck at that point in time. And thankfully, raw stocks are just cool. They are super easy. They are like, don't even think about it. Raw, raw stock in this point is super cheap. Like we, we're going to send like tons of it without even thinking about it. So that's the easy aspect. And then all you have to do to make sure this printer can do amazing things in space is add robotic arms, which we have already developed. Uh, for example, Canada arm. Like we have giant robotic arms on a giant robotic flying space station, which can grab a freaking uh, capsules from space and dock it with itself. So we got that. We got the technology. We like technology part is sorted. We just have to make them uh, marry each other. Basically robotic arm shall marry the 3d printer that's all we have to do but there are certain issues specifically if you're putting the printer in vacuum itself not inside iss because iss is providing you a very awesome cocoon because otherwise humans won't be inside it so what are the issues if you take the printer outside then what you have to deal with first thing there is no air for cooling like if anybody tom dick and harry deals with 3d printer they will tell you it's like cooling is the key we do want heated chamber we also want to cool the damn thing the moment this comes out otherwise it will sag so there is a lot of issue you need cooling and not to mention electronics need cooling anything that you heat up over time will you know expand or get damaged too much if it's like you know heat is not taken away so there is a limit how uh, basically how much uh, hot you can make that so on earth it's super getting rid of heat is super easy simply because we have convection basically atmosphere is taking the heat away but because you are in a vacuum vacuum is being the perfect insulator even a small heating element let's say 10 watt of heating element that will can easily melt up stuff simply because the heat will not go anywhere it will slowly creep up slowly 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 creep up and then melt your stuff so fundamentally cooling is an issue and iss needs huge radiators i am talking like freaking giant radiators are needed on iss multiple of them not even one multiple of them like uh, there is a like a joke about that like in sci-fi movies because it's written by artists not a like person who deals with size like the biggest thing they show oh everybody is starting to freeze to death if the moment power goes out what will happen in iss if the cooling system breaks they will literally get heat stroke and this will happen very quickly so that's the issue there is no air for cooling you have to figure that out and then we come to the friction aspect simply because if you have something rubbing against each other it's gonna destroy each other sooner or later then you might be like what about using oils or grease because we do not have gravity those things will not work the way we expect it to so fundamentally we want to make something dry but if you make it dry over time it's gonna wear down and you might be like what if we make the surface super smooth like mirror like finish awesome people tried that it's just problem is metal if there is no atmosphere there is no gas trapped into the metal itself as, as in like metal can Lattice, it has a tendency to get a bit too intermingled with stuff so what does that mean the same way you have metal one metal two which is same metal basically this is aluminum this is aluminum same alloy and if you bring them too close to each other and they are perfectly flat they're gonna weld to each other because the electron will literally jump from one uh, basically atomic shell to another atomic shell and it's gonna be actually perfectly welded so that cold welding is a very serious issue and we have lost many satellites where they had a, a part of metal touching another part of it okay antenna is now jammed the mission is kind of in danger now you cannot utilize the high gain antenna you have to only use low gain antenna because well cold welding things like that happen so friction is a very hard thing to deal with so you have to design everything around it so you will have like okay aluminum rails then you will have brass inserts you have to figure things out so it's a very very difficult thing and then high temperature change because there is no atmosphere there is no buffer so sensor radiations are like they get very excited 
with you when they meet you so they can cook you and the problem is because your own body is casting a shadow on the dark side uh, that dark side could end up reaching absolute zero now again okay. on principle it never reaches actually absolute zero but it can go very cold as in like cold enough to uh, make a liquid hydrogen so Fundamentally, that temperature fluctuation is very brutal. So you have to invest a lot on insulation. Like this is a, just a small patch of thermal insulation utilized in a uh, spacesuit used in extravehicular activity. Basically, they have lots of insulation on top of insulation with some extra love of insulation just to make sure that sun does not cook you and you do not freeze to death inside. So fundamentally, you have to design your structure to withstand that kind of temperature setup. And then we have the love of radiation. So high radiation dose has an issue with uh, it can fry your uh, electronics. And even if you can make an electron that is robust enough and powerful enough, then you come with another aspect. Uh, basically, right now, 3D printers are most awesome when you are using utilizing plastics. Now, plastics are inherently marriage between uh, basically carbon and hydrogen. They are hydrocarbon. They are very long chains of hydrocarbon. But unfortunately, in space, you do not have an ozone layer. So you have something known as divorce rays aka ultraviolet so these ultraviolet rays ends up divorcing the system so fundamentally the, your plastic is not going to last as long as you would think so you uh, all the structures all the design documentation they have a way to shield the stuff some case they are like they are building a giant structure and then behind that there is a shun sail to make sure that uh, you need a metal to protect against that so just aluminium foil will do or in some cases they cannot spray coated it. like it's still an issue and again even if you do not have, do anything it's just like giant pipe of made out of pla directly exposed to vacuum it's gonna survive long enough it's not gonna be like okay uh, ultraviolet ray touch it in like a movie is gonna disintegrate it's not gonna happen like that but it's not gonna last for decades and decades so radiation is also an issue and there is no repair center you can't bring it to like you know amazon 24 hour repair center there is no repair center yet so even though it has so many challenges the fact is we have to do this sooner or later we have to do it's like almost like orbital depot same way we reached a point of making a reusable rocket we will reach a point of refueling ro uh, rockets in the space we will reach a point where we are building stuff in space now because of the importance and the necessity of this nasa is already working behind the scene and that's why there is a 3d printer in space that's why there is a company known as a uh, you know in uh, make in space so everything is going according to the plans and structures have been already figured out so first thing that company is going to do the company made in space they're gonna figure out solar panel support because right now if you ask any satellite uh, manufacturer it's like what's the biggest headache that you have to deal with first thing they're gonna say to you is god damn power limit they do not have as much power as they want like for example imagine it this way if starlink satellites they had more power as in let's say three or four times more power they would be powerful enough in principle that your mobile should be able to directly receive it they would not need giant dish that can directly work or heck if gps satellites were like uh, three times more powerful it would reach a point where the places where you have that dead spot will shrink very significantly and uh, signal integrity will improve so a lot of things will improve if you can just improve the power and in terms of propulsion ion engines are very awesome if you can provide them a lot of power because you want to have your uh, gas canister basically argon neon or whatever you are utilizing you want that puppy to as small as possible but you want the electrical part to be as beefy as possible but we have limitation with solar panels so that's why we can't put enough oomph into them so where you cannot expect to actually have ion engines in international space station that's the pri primary problem with that is the solar panel part now solar cells are super light but heck we have rollable solar panels right now which are ludicrously efficient and lightweight problem is the support structure so if you have seen uh, i uh, basically structure that were utilized in uh, basically falcon uh, series of rocket that is carrying the stash link satellites they are like a like a folding jigsaw folding now here's the problem with that that's everything is awesome but the structure has to be built in that way that you understand multi-g shock of rocket launch so those hinges they are overbuilt consequence uh, even though you can pack 20 percent more than that technically speaking three times more than that you can't you have to design in such a way that the hinges the joints survive that and folding is limited you can uh, ideally you want rollable because that allows you the maximum volume maximum surface area so in those sort of scenarios nasa realizes this and this company making space their primary function is just make the structure for solar cells they are utilizing rollable solar panels uh, almost same as how it was utilized in uh, basically hubble telescope international space station but again these are new designs multi uh, very high efficiency and uh, lightweight also but if you need a structure to give it surface area, so the idea is they're going to 3D print the surface area. The uh, final prop they are sending up there that is supposed to be size of a refrigerator and the printer is supposed to be exposed to the vacuum directly. And it's going to have three robotic arms and almost design is finalized, but they are building up the final thing and then they're going to figure out the launch date. So uh, Archonaut and NASA, they are working on it and I have provided the video down below. It's quite amazing. Like these robots are building. Now, be mindful, it's very slow. So in four minutes, they are doing time lapse and you can still see they are only doing small thing. But the idea 
idea is they can build stuff and how big they can go bonkers like the first idea like first generation we should have at least twice the large solar panels or three times the large solar panel and so once we figured it out then we can keep sending raw materials in there now of course this printer will break so do not expect like okay one we sent one printer there and it's like it's doing everything else it's just like it's just have to build a stay there long enough where it's profitable and then have some extra profit and then by that time you will have like a complete uh, supply chain of basically cartridge and uh, printer and once you achieve that awesome then we can do really amazing things the first step of manufacturing would be always making structures for solar cells once we figure those puppy out then we are done like after that we can start thinking big more broad things like metal 3d printers right now this is level one so this was my presentation on uh, basically make in space hopefully you have liked it learn from it in that case please click the like button share it amongst your friends that will help me a lot if you didn't like it then really enjoy it i urge you to press dislike press it twice to show me extra disappointment please leave a comment because i do try to reply to all of them subscribe press the bell icon if you're free and as always thanks for watching